some months ago, I was approached by ICC and Mr. Nanauti actually called me and said, um, we want you to be part of the ICC event. And I said, yeah, definitely, definitely I'll be there. And then a few weeks later came the topic. Uh, okay. Talk about uh, specialty chemicals and innovation. So firstly, I felt great about it. Um, so PSF as a company is then recognized as a specialty chemicals company. Sometimes within our company, we question ourselves, are we a commodity company or a specialty company? Um, then secondly, also, um, yeah, that we do contribute to innovation in the industry. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be representing uh, the company here. And what you see here as a building is our uh, innovation campus um, at Turbe, uh, which we inaugurated a few years ago, about three years ago, um, and which is part of our um, global innovation hub. Um, so I'm not here trying to sell BSF because um, uh, my head of innovation and research in the company told me, well, Mohan, it's quite tricky you're going to talk about this because you can't talk about all the stuff we are doing in the company at the moment um, because we want to protect that and that's IP and stuff like this. At the same time, you can talk about a few things um, which uh, is good for the industry. Um, so now, tough ask. Um, I can't talk about anything I know, um, but I have to talk about things which I'm supposed to know. Um, so I said, okay, how do we do this? Um, yes, I mean, this slide probably has been shown at every conference um, by a lot of people. Um, yes, we are living in a challenged world. Um, population is growing, population wants more, um, and in all aspects, whether it's agriculture, health, energy, housing, uh, mobility, um, we're stressing uh, the organization of this planet uh, to the extent um, that in the last hundred odd years, um, we've been consuming the resources of this planet um, maybe at a rate where the planet cannot sustain anymore and we're at a tipping point where if we don't do something about it, um, we will be in a terrible mess. I mean, the whole importance of sustainability in the morning session, uh, we heard about it from McKinsey, uh, from the other colleagues, that um, this is a threat, but and every threat historically over the last hundred odd years, um, we as chemical industry have come up with solutions which have um, responsibly taken us to the next steps. And just a simple example, um, my colleagues from AG, I mean, yesterday I was in Udaipur with my AG team because they celebrated um, a big achievement for them. They told me that in the last hundred years, the average productivity of a farmer has grown about 30 times. So this is something which we've managed to do with the same resources. And the key aspect is how have we done that? Uh, have we done that in a responsible way and are we doing it in a way that it can be continued going forward? Um, to put a few sectors, I mean, the, with 20 minutes, I think it's impossible to cover the whole domain of uh, innovation and possibilities. So I thought, let me focus on a few sectors. Um, food um, typically is a challenge and especially the low income food market. Um, the another thing I learned a few years ago is um, the amount of waste, I mean the amount of food we produce on this planet is actually sufficient to feed um, probably three times the population of this planet. But the amount of waste that we do um, is a huge challenge and how, and these are areas for innovation. Um, housing, the amount of people living in um, substandard conditions um, across the planet, especially in the developing world, is an area where it requires a lot of materials, it requires a lot of innovation, um, and that's where we can contribute. And last but not the least, whether it's mobility, um, renewable energy, or energy efficiency, this is something where um, we are all aware, and uh, we talk about this all the time. I'm not saying we don't innovate, but we don't innovate enough or fast enough. Um, within our own country, I mean, some pictures um, uh, that we see here, whether it's um, bottom right on the plastics, which um, I think is being uh, talked about everywhere, and um, you do have um, um, several initiatives to curtail uh, plastics. It was interesting, a couple of weeks ago, my uh, global CEO was here, and uh, we had a discussion about um, uh, plastic waste. And um, he told me something, again, which he said, maybe even five years ago to me, that one, the problem is not with plastics because plastics have probably a better uh, CO2 footprint than an alternative material. 
Um, however, what we do with plastics is a problem. So plastic waste. So what do we do with plastics? So I'll, I'll have a couple of slides on that. Um, and then I'll talk about um, the urbanization challenges, mobility challenges, and energy challenges. Um, so again, uh, these are the four topics that uh, I took up um, uh, where I have a couple of slides each and an opinion. Uh, firstly, single-use plastics, and I was shocked by these numbers that projections say that um, there will be a ton of plastic in the ocean for every three tons of fish uh, pretty soon if we don't change things. Um, yes, it's a huge risk, and I'm really happy that with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, many of us in the room are part of this alliance. We are taking uh, important measures that um, probably arrest this problem. Um, a couple of things, what are the two possibilities? Uh, firstly, chem cycling. Um, I remember at a previous conference I talked about it and also some of my colleagues from the industry. And this is really an opportunity um, not just for the chemical industry but also for um, an entire ecosystem when it comes uh, to the collectors. How do you collect uh, these plastics? Uh, how do you segregate it? Um, how do you um, then transform this into back into pyrolysis oil, uh, back into the oil, and then have the consumers uh, who accept this into their uh, packaging material again so that you establish a circular route. Um, I must say that in the last 12 odd months, the discussions and projects and funding of um, these initiatives has increased significantly. Um, and also research going into how can you get the targeted quality uh, of oils which can then feed specific crackers. I mean, you can't, I mean, we all know that uh, there's so many types of plastics and then the segregation is difficult. Um, and how do you get the right kind of oils that go into the right uh, systems? Um, so a lot of research is going into this. And then there is this fundamental research about is there a possibility um, to get into the properties that are required at the end of the day. Can we get this from single layered plastics rather than multi layered plastics? I mean, we all know the challenges with multi layered plastics. So, there are two fields of uh, innovation and research um, which I think offers us as an industry a lot of opportunities. The biodegradable plastics, um, again, is a point where BSF also has this um, eco bio where um, we have been also running certain projects in India um, to make sure that it's compostable plastic. But this, again, needs a certain regulatory framework. It needs a certain valuation of uh, the bio uh, mass which comes out at the end of the day to make this viable. So there are challenges in there, but there are opportunities. Now, we talked in the earlier session, I digress a little bit from the topic as to um, what can make uh, India successful? So we always had this comparison also, McKinsey gave this comparison about India versus China. Um, I think that's not uh, the comparison to be made. Um, China for that matter, I think what made them successful in, on top of what my esteemed colleague uh, Kartikeyan just talked about was a target. I mean, there was a target as to which field you want to be successful at. Where do you want to be in that field? A classical business school strategy done at a country level for chemicals. Um, here, for us, I think we've been successful. It was also talked about in the earlier session uh, in the API space. So whether it's pharma or ag, we've been relatively successful because that's a target we had and uh, we made that happen. Maybe not at the same scale as China, but typically at a good success rate. Um, now, in this field, um, we talked about petrochemical intermediates, uh, we talked about plastics here, for example. This is definitely a need for the country. Question is, what can we do? What kind of resources we allocate in our institutions, in our uh, industry, to make sure that, firstly, make what we can do, already knowing from outside, and come up with new innovative materials there. Um, the other aspect, mobility, um, I think the big challenge which also I think came up in the earlier session about um, oil to chemicals, um, yes, there is a threat uh, coming out of uh, um, e-mobility and our personal view and also my personal view is this provides even more opportunities for the chemical industry. 
yes, the internal combustion engine is under threat from electromobility. That offers us a lot of uh, opportunities, um, for example, to increase the length of the drive for the cooling systems that are required um, in, the bat in the battery cars and so on. And in this context, at this point, when I look at the Indian ecosystem, we don't have much in terms of producing battery packs. There are a few people talking about what we want to do, uh, but a lot of it is, again, import dependent. So it might be another story, like the pharma story, where we import most of the stuff and then do the assembly here, um, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, we have to get into the basic materials and look at how we innovate in those materials to make sure that we have the drive distance that we require whatever that is, 300 kilometers or 400 kilometers that is talked about today. Um, and how do we get all the materials that are required by these cars? So the challenges of the conventional automotive industry, the light weighting still exists for e-mobility. Um, the noise is a different kind of issue. You know, uh, someone was telling me that um, the problem with this car is it doesn't make a noise. Um, so how do you, yeah, I mean, if, uh, I like that. Um, because I asked, so what's the problem if it doesn't make a noise? Well, if you drive that car for four hours, you might have a tendency to fall asleep uh, in the car. Um, so a different kind of challenge, you know. Um, so now what do you do about it? Um, so jokes apart, um, I think the automotive industry is the industry which um, offers us the highest level of innovation possibilities as a chemicals and material supply. Um, in that context, um, I see uh, e-mobility as more of a um, possibility to innovate on materials and science. Um, again, I repeat myself, it's not just limited to the battery part, it is also related to all the other parts of the car. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities and since we are at a point um, where there is a transition that's going to happen and we are not too far behind the rest of the world in terms of this. Um, I think there is an opportunity for us to look at uh, uh, innovation there in terms of materials. Um, a third part which I wanted to um, address and because if we have to close the gap with many of our peers, um, we cannot do it in the conventional way. The conventional way, whatever, uh, I mean, many of you probably have worked through research, I haven't. Um, but talking to a few of my colleagues, what they told me is, well, it is uh, manpower intensive, a lot of people in a lot of labs, you invest in labs, and then there's some great idea which comes up, you scale it up, and then eventually you have uh, the whole process done. I, what I'm told at this point in time is, I mean, what you see on the right is our own supercomputer that we um, invested in as BSF, which accelerates a lot of these things. I mean, a lot of possibilities uh, with the molecules and atoms, which typically we would have to spend a lot of time and man hours can be accelerated via these supercomputers. So having this infrastructure, and I don't think every company uh, needs to do this, um, but there are, um, possibilities of doing it via collaborations and institutions to accelerate um, uh, innovation. 